Hello everyone. Welcome to Studio Teal. Well, as promised, my jellyfish tutorial is finally here. And also as promised, I've added some pops of color and switched up the technique a bit to make this jellyfish a little bit more three-dimensional. I've also added a surprise, which you'll see at the end. So let's get started. So I've put down my base layer of my dark blue, blown it out with a hairdryer, and coated my edges as I normally would. Now I've added some lines of my iridescent cerulean blue and I'm using my palette knife to blend those into the background. To add interest to the background and give the impression of flowing water, I then take my hair dryer and blow out this area that I've gone over with my palette knife. As you may have guessed from the intro, this is a vertical piece, but again, I'm showing you the process in the horizontal orientation so you have a bigger screen to look at. After this, I do a quick torch just to make sure there are no bubbles hiding in there. In the first jellyfish I created, I started with the chain pull tentacles and then did the body. This time, because I want to try to make it more three-dimensional, I'm going to start with the body. So I'm drawing a curved line with fluorescent blue and adding some white so that it'll stand out more from the background. Now I'm going to start blowing out my paint. I want to blow it down quite far since I'm sort of envisioning this jellyfish being seen from a bit below so you're going to kind of see the circular portion at at the bottom of the jellyfish and I'm going to be layering the center portion and the chain pull tentacles over top. So I'm blowing out, I'm going to try to get a nice rounded shape along the bottom. pretty good. Now I'm going to use my finger and my palette knife to smooth out any sort of bumps along the body of my jellyfish. Now I'm going to start adding in some of the straight tentacles that are going to be at the back. So I'm starting this about in the center of the body blowout and as I mentioned I'm going to add more detail to the bottom later on that's going to make this look more three-dimensional. Now I want to add some yellow to the center part of my jelly, but before I do that, I'm going to swipe down a layer of white. As you can see, I'm working on blue, and as we all know, if I were to layer yellow directly over the blue, I'd end up with green. So putting a layer of white down first will help your yellow stay yellow.
Next, I want to add some smaller swipes of fluorescent orange. I'm just playing back and forth with this until I'm happy with the way it looks. Next, I'm going to start adding my chain pull tentacles. So I'm using fluorescent pink. You can use more than one color for these, uh, and I have before, but in this case, I've already got quite a few colors going on, and I didn't want it to get too busy, so I'm just using fluorescent pink. So I dip my chain in the paint, roll it to cover all sides, lay it down on the surface of the canvas in a, a curvy pattern, and then sort of slowly and gently just pull up towards the top. Just some general tips for chain pulls and this process is you're definitely better off not to have a lot of paint on your surface. That's why when I start, I spread my paint with the hairdryer. I find it leaves just the right amount of paint left on the surface to do your chain pull. You want to dip your chain. Um, you also don't want it dripping in paint. You want it covered. I often coat it, pick it up, dab the end down onto my surface to take that heavy paint off of the end of the chain and then lay it down and start your pull. going to touch up the center a little bit. Then I'm going to take some of my pink and just drag it down through starting at the top of the tentacle portion. Just I want to make it look uh, more integrated with the curly tentacles. Okay, now you're gonna see what I'm talking about when I was saying that I wanna make the jellyfish look more three-dimensional. So I'm gonna outline the bottom of the body, what would be the, the rounded part at the bottom of the body where the jellyfish um, contract in and out to push itself through the water. So I'm dipping my chain in white, laying it down and dragging it around to draw the circular part at the bottom of the body. Now I'm going to go over the white with my fluorescent pink and again using the white down first was a way to let the pink stand out more from the blue and be brighter.
Now I'm going to take the pink and I'm going to draw it up towards the top of the body. I was looking at some pictures of jellyfish and I noticed that a lot of them actually have different stripes or bands of colors going across their body. And I thought that would be an interesting feature to incorporate that, again, would help the body look like it has more dimension. It's time to add the rest of the straight tentacles to the front and sides of the body. I'm using fluorescent blue for this. And again, you're just simply dipping your chain, blotting it off. I start at the top, the body of the jellyfish, and drag down towards the bottom, trying to keep your chain fairly straight. So draw the tentacles around the entire bottom of the body. Don't worry about pulling down over your curvy tentacles and the other things you've drawn before. It won't hurt them. It's part of the effect. You want to make sure that it looks like your straight tentacles are coming from the whole way around the body. And for the last step, I'm adding some paintbrush spatters of the fluorescent blue to the background. To get some different sizes of spatters, I also like to take the end of my paintbrush, dip it in the paint, and do some larger dots here and there. Okay, and we're just about finished. Let me flip it around. So this is how the finished painting looks wet. I'm gonna zoom in and give you a close up. Now this is the painting dry, and are you ready to see that surprise I've been talking about? Fluorescent colors glow under black light. This worked out just the way I was hoping it would. I was also hoping that I could create something where it would look different in regular light than in the black light, as in certain parts would stand out more under black light than under the regular light. In daylight, the fluorescent blue, which is a transparent color, doesn't stand out much from the dark blue of the background. But under the black light, the fluorescent blue becomes vibrant and the detail in the background disappears. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please subscribe, like and share. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next week.